What's up guys, how you all doing? Welcome to another video. Now today, we're talking about something which to a more advanced photographer might seem fairly straightforward, but to a lot of beginners and a lot of people who are still on their journey learning photography, it can be quite intimidating. And that is the dial on top of your camera that has all of the different modes, AV, TV, ATS, a green square, an M. What do they all mean? In this video, I'm going to explain each of them individually and let you know what they are for and how you can use them. Before we get into the detail of it, I'm going to ask you guys to do all of the usual YouTube stuff for me. Make sure you hit that like button. It helps my channel so much. It helps my video to be more successful. YouTube will look at a video that has more likes and they'll say, hey, this video could be good. And then they'll share it to more people. And obviously that helps me out on my channel. That's why I ask you to do it. And I really, really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Loads of other videos to come on my channel. This year, 2022, going to be a good one. Make sure you subscribe to follow along. What's up guys, forgive me, I am briefly interrupting this video just to let you know that we've got a special promotion right now over on my website on my Lightroom presets. You can get my general Lightroom presets pack which includes things like early morning blues, fiery landscape, faded film. You can get my sports pack which includes things like my sports starter preset, my cold as ice, my dramatic black and white, all the reds and of course you can get my free starter sports preset. Also, if you head over there to the website, in the checkout, you can use the code YTube10 and that's going to get you 10% off any of those preset packs that you would like. With one simple click in Lightroom, you can turn your image from something regular into a cool edited photo. Go check them out. Link is in the description. Right, back to Rob for the video. Okay, that's enough of listening to old Rob bang on about presets. Let's get into this. Now, your camera dial will have lots of different modes on it. And in fact, it's gonna have more modes than we will talk about today. There are some things which I'll touch on briefly, but we're going to talk about the five main ones. And those are the green square, or sometimes it has an A in it, but normally it's a green square. It might even say auto. We're then gonna look at the next one, which normally is a P on your camera. The next one we're then gonna look at on Canon cameras, it is TV, and on Nikon cameras, it's an S. Those are the same modes, we'll get onto that in a minute. Next one we're gonna look at on Canon, it's AV, or on Nikon, it's just an A. And the last one we're gonna look at is the M, and it's normally an M on both Canon and Nikon, and in fact, on most cameras, Sony, those things as well. So the first one uh, is the green square. It might be a green square, depending on the camera you're using, it might be an A in the middle of it, but it's normally green. And in very simple terms, that one is fully automatic. It means if you're in that mode, you can just point your camera at something, the camera is gonna look at the scene, it's gonna work out the exposure, it will decide the shutter speed, the aperture, everything for you, and all you have to do is press the button and take the photo. It really is a fully automatic system. It's just like your typical point and shoot cameras or even picking up your phone and taking a photo. The camera itself will decide everything for you. All you gotta do is point it in the right direction, press the button, and it will take the photo. Some people will look down on that mode as automatic, but don't overlook it. If you're getting used to your camera, you're learning what to do, you've literally got a, a DSLR camera in your hands for the first time. There's nothing wrong with shooting photos in automatic while you get used to your camera and the different buttons. Okay, moving into the next mode. Now this one is the P. Now that stands for program mode, or sometimes it's programmed or programmed automatic, but it's the one that is a P. It's normally next to the green auto one. Often a lot of confusion because when people first go into this mode, they kind of think, well, it's still fully automatic. What's the difference between that and the green one? Well, the answer is that the camera gives you a little bit more control. It still decides everything for you. So it decides what the exposure should be. You'll point your camera towards something and it will decide the shutter speed, the aperture and the ISO level. But what you can do is a thing called exposure compensation. We're normally using the dial on the back of the camera depending on which camera you're using you can adjust it up and down and it will make your image a bit brighter or a bit darker depending on what you do you can also control a few other settings like white balance and stuff like that which you don't have control over in the fully automatic mode so what I would say is this mode is perfect for somebody who who feels like they want to step forwards but is a bit nervous of getting into the the semi-automatic modes that we'll get onto in a minute 
P program mode is a good place for you to start. It gives you that little bit of control. You can start playing around with a few more settings without having to worry too much. You're gonna be able to learn some focus and composition without having to feel like you've got to immediately know everything about how to shoot manual photography. So that's the P. Now, depending on your camera, the next one along on your dial is normally in Canon TV mode, or if you're using a Nikon camera, it's normally in S. Now this one is the shutter priority modes. With Canon, it's TV. Um, I think it's time the, the T comes from with the shutter speed, uh, whereas Nikon is just the S for shutter. So this one prioritizes your shutter speed. Now what that means is the camera, rather than deciding all of the settings for you, is saying to you, okay, you know what, you control the shutter speed, you set it to whatever you want it to be, and then whatever you decide, we're then going to adjust the other two settings, the ISO level and the aperture, to get the exposure of your image right. Now this is really good. If you're a beginner who is shooting something like sports or something that's going to move, you can't trust your camera in fully automatic mode because it won't necessarily make the shutter speed fast enough to freeze the action in your photo. So you can go to this mode, you can set your shutter speed to something faster like 1 800th of a second. That's enough to freeze action in most of the simple cases. And then your camera will say, okay, so you want the, the shutter speed to be 1 800th of a second. Based on that, we're going to use this aperture and this ISO level to give you the right exposure in your image. It's a real good way to learn shutter speed and learn how your shutter speed can affect the other two settings. Because if you play around with it and take photos at all different shutter speeds, and then you look at what the other settings were for each of those images, you start to get an idea of how shutter speed plays a part in the exposure triangle affecting the other two. Okay, next up we move into AV mode on your Canon cameras or A mode on your Nikon cameras. This is aperture priority mode. Now this is exactly the same as the TV or S, the shutter priority mode, but this time instead of letting you control the shutter speed, it's letting you control the aperture. Now again, this is a fantastic mode if you're learning photography and learning how to shoot manuals because you can look at your image and you can decide, right, what, what aperture do I want here? What kind of depth of field do I need? You might be shooting a landscape, in which case you want your aperture to be a higher number, like f9 or f11. And then the camera would decide, right, well, for that aperture setting, I need to have this shutter speed and this ISO uh, to get the right exposure. You do have to be a bit careful here, because if you go with a much higher aperture number, like f11, it will then slow that shutter speed right down. So this is where you have to either hold your camera really steady, or you consider using a tripod. You might decide you want a shallow depth of field, like you're photographing a portrait of a person, in which case you can adjust that aperture to a much lower number, like f2.8, and it will adjust the other settings accordingly and give you a much more shallow depth of field with that nice blurry background. So you have full control of the aperture without having to worry too much because the camera will take care of the shutter speed and the ISO level to make sure you still get the right exposure. So you see what I mean? The, these are great learning modes. The, the shutter speed priority, the aperture priority, because you can start to play around with them and see how they interact with each other. That's exactly how I learned to shoot manual photography. Which leads us nicely into the fifth mode that we're gonna look at. Now that is manual mode. On most cameras, it's normally M for manual. This one is the scary one, because this gives you control over everything. It lets you control all three of the variables in the exposure triangle. You can control the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO level, along with everything else in your camera. You are fully in charge, you are controlling everything. It's not as scary as it seems. I've actually made a video about how to shoot manual photography. I'll link it right here if you want to go check it out. I also sell on my websites uh, like cheat cards which will help you learn manual photography. You can check those out on my website right here. I'm doing a special January promotion as well. If you use the code YTube10 you get 10% off. So check that out in the description if you'd like to. But that's manual mode and that gives you full control. So those are the five key modes. Now normally with most cameras you do have some other ones too. A lot of cameras will have a B. Uh, that's down for bulb mode. That's a bit more of a specific mode in fairly unique settings. So we won't go into the detail of that one right now. That's probably a whole separate video. And then a lot of dials um, will have other modes as well. They're often called things like C1, C2, C3. Those are what you call custom modes. So you can set up your camera with a, a setup or a, a, a group of settings that 
you really like and then you can save that as, as like C1 for example and then you could come up with something different and save that as C2 so that when you switch your camera into C1 mode or C2 mode it's automatically set up like you'd planned and how you wanted it to be. Really useful if you have like set modes that you like to shoot all the time. But the important things to learn are the five we've talked about. The automatic, the program, the shutter priority, the aperture priority, and of course, the big old manual mode. I hope you guys found that interesting. If you did enjoy it, if you did find it useful for you, do me a favor, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna see you on the next video.